Welcome, welcome on back, guys. It's your girl, Fuzz, and welcome back to another Stardew Valley video. Honestly, I've been missing Stardew Valley so much ever since I decided to have a break, and now I want to get back into the swing of things. I have so many ideas that I've left in the background, and now I'm thinking about bringing them back and doing multiple YouTube videos a week, so hopefully you'll be here for the journey. Also, to those that are new to my adventure, I started doing some really fancy candles if you want to check them out. I'll leave a link to fuzzalicious.com down below for some Stardew Valley-inspired candles, as well as some fancy candles I've been making. But back on the video topic, today is everything you need to know about preserve jars, which is something you'll want to know if you really like the farming aspect of Stardew Valley. Now, not only is it important to just sell your crops to make money, but there's actually a way that you can increase the income that they provide you by certain machines that are available in Stardew Valley. One of those machines that are available is the preserve jar, which is available when you level up at level four of farming. To those that are new to the game, every time you level up, something will unlock. And this is something that's important depending on the skill that you want to improve. Preserve jars are highly suggested to those that find themselves selling their crops often and want another way of increasing their value instead of just looking out for the quality that they are. Preserve jars can be placed anywhere whether it's inside your farmhouse, in a building or even outside on your farmland. There are pretty much four items that are crafted by the preserve jar depending on the item that you put in the preserve jar and these are placing any vegetable crop that you have within the preserve jar and waiting just less than three in-game days for it to turn into pickles. This is the same for any fruit crop that you have by placing it within the preserve jar and waiting less than three in-game days will turn that into jam. You've also got yourself row, which is available once you place a pond on your farm and there are fish within it. And waiting just less than three in-game days will provide you with age row. Just a little side note to anyone that wants a pond, it's available via the carpenter's shop, which is Robin over in the mountains. Lastly, just like row, you can actually turn sturgeon row, which is a sturgeon fish which is found in the mountains, and place that within a preserve jar waiting for days and that will give you caviar. So how exactly do you benefit by using a preserve jar rather than just selling the raw material? Well, a preserve jar actually increases the amount of gold that item sells at depending on what it is. For example, to do the math, any fruit or vegetable that is placed within a preserve jar once turned into pickles or jam will double the value of that raw material plus 50 gold. So for example, if you place yourself an apricot and an apricot is sold for 100 gold, when turned into a jam, it will sell for 250 gold. Age row is double the value of the row that's been placed within the preserve jar and caviar from sturgeon row can be sold for 500 gold. It's actually a great idea to get your hands on a preserve jar, especially if your main income or your gold is coming from your crops. Now down the line, when you start to level up in farming, you'll find out that kegs, which is available at farming level six, is also available and they also work the same way as preserve jars. Fruits when put into a keg are turned into wines and are actually actually increased by three times the raw amount. Whereas vegetables when placed inside a keg turn into juices and this increases the value by 2.25 times. Now the reason for the mention of kegs is not only does the multiplier sound like a good idea, but there are actually some crops that benefit from being placed within a preserve jar rather than being placed in kegs. And if this is something that you wanna capitalize on and something you wanna to start to consider, here are the crops that you wanna start considering per month. If you wanna benefit more gold out of them rather than just putting them in kegs, eggs. For spring, you'll want to consider cauliflower, garlic, green bean, kale, parsnip, potatoes, unmilled rice, apricot from apricot trees, and salmon berries. For summer, you've got fiddlehead fern, which is available through the secret woods, but can also be found every season at Ginger Island's jungle and skull cavern. You've got radish, taro, which can also be found in any season on Ginger Island, tomatoes, blueberries, and hot peppers. And for fall, you've got amaranth, artichoke, beet, bok choy, corn, eggplant, yam and blackberry. You'll also want to consider tea leaves which is available during any month as long as you've got the two hearts from Caroline to get yourself a tea sampling. Now obviously this is a lot of crops to consider for every season so here are the crops that you want to consider if you want to get the maximum amount of gold you can for that season. For spring you'll want to consider cauliflower as the most profitable crop to put in a preserve jar but you'll also want to consider an apricot sapling to grow yourself some apricots because these also benefit via the preserve jars and also finding any salmon berries you can via the bushes when walking around spring from spring day 15 to spring day 17. For summer you'll want to consider radishes and taro root as the most profitable but you'll also want to check out the secret woods as often as you can for fiddlehead ferns. 
And for fall, you'll want to consider planting yourself yams and artichokes as these are the best to place within preserve jars and also picking up any blackberries you can around Pelican Town as these also benefit from placing them within preserve jars. So you want to get to level 4 farming as quickly as you can. Well, you need 1,300 experience points to get yourself to level 4 farming. But obviously you can't tell how much experience points you have or how much you're gaining from these without mods. So to those that want to get to level 4 farming in their first season, you'll want to plant and collect 163 parsnips or 57 cauliflower or 76 strawberries or kale. So what about considering age row if you like placing your row within a preserve jar? Well most fishes within the game when placed in a pond have a good chance of giving you row. But some row is actually more valuable than others just like some fishes be more valuable than others. Here are my top 5 fishes I can suggest to you if you want to maximize making the most gold out of your age row. Consider fishing yourself up a stonefish within the mines at the mountains at level 20 of the mines to be able to sell their age row at 360 per age row. Or why not a sturgeon row which can only be caught in the mountains in summer or winter during the day and have their row turn into caviar to be sold at 500 gold each. What about a blobfish that can only be caught during the night market which is between winter day 15 and 17 within the submarine and sell their age row for 560 gold each. Then you got yourself an ice pit which can be caught at level 60 of the mines and their age row can be sold for 560 gold each. And of course one of my favorite fishes to put within a pond is the lava eel which can be caught at level 80 of the mines and their age row will sell for a massive 760 gold each. If you want to know everything you want to know about ponds I'll leave a link to a video in the annotations above and the description below. If you're serious of getting to level 4 of farming as early as spring of your year 1 playthrough, I would definitely consider getting yourself some sprinklers as not only will it take a lot of energy to be taking care of your plants, but watering all your plants every day will take a long time and I mean a long time. A watering can that hasn't been upgraded by Clint via the blacksmith only has 40 charges of water usage which means you'll need to be refilling your watering can often plus your stamina will only allow for 130 crops to be watered. Without food to replenish your energy, it's it's a lot. <laughs> so this is why I definitely suggest getting yourself some sprinklers and your first sprinkler will be available at level 2 of farming which will cover 4 crops at once. And it'll only require 1 copper bar and 1 iron bar to craft each sprinkler. So to get yourself to level 2 of farming, you'll want to harvest 16 cauliflower, 22 kale or strawberries, or even 27 potatoes. Once you get to level 2 of farming and unlock sprinklers, then you'll only need 920 experience points remaining to get yourself some preserved jars. So the math of that is 10 sprinklers to cover 40 cauliflowers, 13 sprinklers for 51 strawberries or kale, or 29 sprinklers for 115 parsnips. Yes, I love getting nerdy when it comes to Sardew Valley. But hey, it's less for you to figure out and more time for you to start planning out your farm now. If you enjoyed today, why not consider liking, subscribe for some more, and I hope to see you next time. Take care.